Welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box underneath in your YouTube player. And for access to exclusive live streams, worksheets, and other quick tip video lessons, you can find me on Patreon slash Eric Haugen Guitar. Now to the lesson. Essentially, our main progression is A minor, D minor, E7, A minor. Now, uh, in the verse, it's going to actually go A minor, D minor, E7, A minor. And then, though, A minor, D minor, B7, which is a secondary dominant of E7, to E7. So that's what I cop when I started the thing was... Um, let's look at that. So Mark... One of my favorites, as if you're watching this or know my channel, he's one of my, he's one of my heroes. So he is going to take pieces of those chords. So he's not going to do the whole A minor. He's just going to worry about the middle portion there, starting on our D string, seven five five. He's only going to worry about that much of his D minor, the middle portion of that. In fact, the whole song just about takes place on these three strings. 7-7-6. Seven, seven, this is so cool. So it goes... Watch out for that, because that's actually the inner portion of an E7, which is this... That, that version, the CCR E7. I also know it as a Chet Atkins chord. It is... Six, seven, five, but then he immediately is like, ha ha, switches to a different version of E7. We're not at that point, sorry, that's just E. Six, four, five, which caged. If you don't know about the cage system, book a lesson with me and I'll tell you all about it. I love it. It is six, four, five back to that A minor structure. And there's just a little five and five on that D and G. And then here we go into like the A minor, D minor, B7, E part. Look at that. There's that A minor structure. There's that D minor structure. And on that B7, he's only gonna do the tritone of that B7, which is on our D string, that is just seven and eight. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's still that chord, but you don't have to play a whole chord. If there's other members of a band on stage, you don't have to hold it all down. You can just pick the parts you like. Seven and eight, and they're going to move in contrary motion so that the, the, the top note goes up and the bottom note goes down. Mark studied classical. That makes sense. That's a beautiful little re resolve there. So yeah, that whole... Now instead of copying the chorus, I just jump right to the solo because the solo is over a minute long. Uh, and so I want to just, you know, as uh, just get to it. First phrase. One. So he is really going to just stay with this idea of like this middle, this fifth fret zone, our fifth position, seeing A minor, D minor, E7, A minor. He really is staying within that. So the first part, still with that A minor structure, but only seven and five. He gets a uh, pinky to get the seven there. That's what he's doing to the D minor chord. Makes sense. Six, seven, five, four, and once he's there, he's like, hmm. There's that E shape. So he is really just being smart with his chord shapes. So on that E7, six, four, six, five, and it's going to get back to A minor. So seven, six, five. 
So everything he's doing now is just going to cycle between A minor, D minor, E7, E minor. Those really three shapes, but yeah, because the chorus is just... So he's rocking that. Next phrase. Almost the same, but you can see he's starting to build it up. 7-5, you know, there's our A minor. Here's our D minor, 7-7. Seven, seven. Here's our E7. You know, and then he starts to, he starts to really build it up. Now he's going to slide in to that A minor. So that's sliding in. And then he's going to start to, yeah, he's just adding more and more notes. I have my, I have it tabbed out at my feet because, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's hard to keep track of exactly what he's doing there. All right, so we did that one. And then next kind of series of licks. That's, that's kind of, you can see he's just building and building and building. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, it is a, a masterful little solo. So now he's going to hammer on, or yeah, hammer on into that A minor. And then he starts to do this, kind of add two notes at the end. And then he's going to do it to the D minor. There's the D minor. But the same top, and then he's like, oh, okay, but here's E7. Let me change it a little for the E7. So that time it, it only gets to the six. And also, you know, Mark is beating the ever-loving, can I say shit? I think I can on YouTube, uh, out of the guitar. Uh, so a lot of times he is getting more than just that. So I'm playing it pretty clean right now, so it's easy to hear, but it is like. It's hard to hear it specifically. So that time when he gets the A minor, 7 5, and now A minor, he does do a little resolve, 8 7 5. And then we're kind of still back to the. But then he'll like mess with me and like not do that. That time he doesn't. So that line of music is now gonna go. That's just him messing with us. Because yeah, he's like, ah, you thought I was gonna do a regular pattern, but I'm not. I'm gonna just kind of. I'm gonna tweak it. So that line does that pattern, then it doesn't do that pattern on that next D minor. Doesn't do the pattern on the next E7. And then on this A minor, eight, five, seven, five. And then he does, there's a new lick he brings in this syncopated triplet, uh, quarter note triplet thing. So that starts with five and five. Here's that A minor again, though. Here's this D minor. Yes, yeah, so you got. And then he's back to. Yeah, and then he's back to the, the thing to mess with you. So that line. And then he's, he's going to do that. that I, yeah, I guess I should name these things, but I haven't. So it's, yeah. They're just what they are. That one again, and then not that one on that D minor, and then here comes an E7, and then a variant. That time on that A minor, 5 and 5, 8 on the B, 6, 5, 7. Yeah, so by the way, A minor scale. Technically, that's that ended with a harmonic minor note, but yeah, you want to know your minor scale there. All right, we are now about halfway through, and then so he just did a... Then he's going to do that weird quarter note triplet thing again. So, yeah. So that had the busy licks. I guess we'll call those the busy ones, the ones that have the... That have the... Ba -da 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 -da. I call that... Mis that yeah, that's busy. So it does the triplet, busy, on the D minor. So if it's the D minor, that means 
that that seven is going to be down. If it's the E seven, then it's then it's going to be to that G sharp there. So it's like it's either for the A minor, which you know, is kind of that. If it's D minor, it's that. If it's E seven, it's based off of those. So yeah, it did the A minor. Getting near the the part that gets more melodic. That's nice. That that doesn't have the patterns at all. So that is going to be off the A minor. That's all that is, just seven and fives. Here's the D minor. So that's just seven, six, five. Seven and five. Here's our E seven. So yeah, he's right on those chord changes. Seven and six there. There it is. And fives. And here comes one more triplet. And then, then he's going to do triplets off of this next thing. That's just playing around with uh, seven, five, four. So you got. You'll hit one more five there, and then I just go. And then. Nine, nine, seven, five. Best, my favorite lick in it, right here. Ah. That's the good one. All right, let's look at that. So, yeah, that's in general. I find Mark likes to do these shapes. They were kind of like this part. Like he leads a lot with his pinky and does stuff off of that, as opposed to we're used to kind of going in front. He does. He's he's a sneaky little man. He goes behind. Okay, so you got four, five, four. There's our tonic, our seven, five, eight, because D minor. Like he is so on the chord changes, it's terrifying. Okay, so here's an E7. Yeah, he, he's, yeah. oops, nope, he knows what he's doing. So his E7 run, seven, six, four, seven, five, four. And then I love this, he immediately runs an A minor run. This one of these minor with like blues notes in there too. Seven, four, slide to five, five, six, five, eight, five. I mean, that run. So let's just look at all that. And then he's not done. He lands that final thing with eight, five, seven, five. So that whole run. Uh, let's see. I mean, that's Let's all just put our guitars away. I mean, that's so great. All right, so once he's there, though, then he's gonna stay there. He just does it again. Hits a spare six. I caught him do that, a five and an eight. To a four, because it's on E7. So he's like, oh, there's a G sharp, ha, got it. So yeah, that line. And then back to an eight seven five, and he connects that one to one of his. So like that's such a mark thing. Like oh, you thought I was doing minor, now I'm doing blues. Ha ha. So yeah. And that's just you know sevens pushing up to five. I don't need to tell you how to do that. You can see what I'm doing. And then. And then, yep, here's uh, his E7 lick. Seven, six, eight, 
seven, here's A minor. Five, 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 four, leading tone of his uh, key of A harmonic minor, a G sharp, and then I'm back to. I just kind of repeated the first lick, and then I faded out with doing the chords. problem. I think one of the most fascinating things about Hoist That Rag is how tight Mark stays in that fifth position and does all of that in that zone. It, it must have been, he, I wish I could talk to him and find out what his, his thought process was where he was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stay right here and see what I can do because he does a whole heck of a lot with that, utilizing his chord structures, rhythmic syncopation, rhythmic repetition, chromatics, slides, and of course, great tone and uh, whatever the signature Mark Rebeau dog foaming at the mouth attack is. Good luck.